Welcome entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs. Um, if you've registered for a talk on how to kickstart your business with an MBA, then you're in the right place. This is uh, our, uh, our webinar and I'm happy to be with uh, special guests on our panel to talk about the MBA and entrepreneurship uh, and, uh, and uh, how that can all work to help you to start a business. Um, let me start by saying thank you for joining, especially for those of you who are on time and uh, to our panel, who you'll be introduced to shortly. Uh, always great to have conversations around entrepreneurship. It's one of my favorite topics, so very happy to have you all online. Um, let me start by, by giving you a few, a few um, key, key facts, right? So one out of three CEOs actually today hold an MBA. And that's good to know, isn't it? And although we all know about famous MBA dropouts, uh, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, there's also an awful lot of MBA graduates who are successful entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, Larry Page, Michael Bloomberg, and the founder of Nike, um, uh, who's Phil Knight, just to name a few. So today and yesterday, the MBA has always been a great place to pick up the skills that you need um, to kickstart your business. And um, today's webinar is all about uh, helping you understand why an MBA might be a good option if you're thinking about kickstarting your, um, your business. And we'll take EDEC as an example of an MBA, but of course, a lot of this is, uh, is applicable to, uh, to other types of educational programs. But why do we focus on EDEC? Of course, because we're from the EDEC community, but also because EDEC has a very long history of entrepreneurship. In fact, we were born uh, as a school over 115 years ago uh, by a group of entrepreneurs who felt that at that time, universities were not providing practical business focused enough education for their families to take over their family businesses. So essentially a group of entrepreneurs who said, we need more pragmatic, more business focused, more hands-on type of education uh, for our uh, businesses to thrive in the future. And uh, with that, they created a deck. And I think the first class was 12 students. And so today we're over 8,000 and so uh, growing strong. And we have programs all over uh, from bachelors all the way up to PhD. Today, we're going to focus more on the MBA. Because another fun fact to know that there's an age when um, most successful startups start. And, and that's interesting. It's somewhere between 30 and 40 years old. Uh, and in fact, some of the most successful unicorns in the world, uh, you look at the founders and many of them are in that age range. And so that's actually also an age range that people consider doing an MBA. And so that's kind of interesting. We always think of startups and entrepreneurship uh, around young, uh, young people. Uh, and, uh, and so immediately think 26, 27. The reality is that um, it takes a little bit more experience in business and out in life before you're ready to launch yourself into entrepreneurship. And that's what we see. The more successful ventures tend to be from slightly, um, slightly older, or I would say uh, people who've had a few years experience under their belt and maybe have had time to get an education before launching themselves in that. So, um, so, so the MBA, and particularly at a deck, is a good place to get an education and to prepare for um, launching your business. Entrepreneurial skills beyond starting your own business are really highly sought after in companies today. So uh, give you an example. We work right next door to a company called Amadeus. They run the world's airline systems. Um, you may not have ever heard of them, but I'm sure you've used their products as you checked in, checked out, checked your bags onto flights. And uh, interestingly, in the last five years, they've been targeting entrepreneurial profiles into their firm, although it's a firm that is well over 30 years old. So um, why is that? Because today to compete in the marketplace, you need to be agile, you need to have a global perspective, you need to really um, uh, be able to act fast and solve problems. And those are all the kinds of skills that you'll be working on uh, during an MBA. So um, what we see today are not only big businesses looking for entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial type profiles, but also MBAs starting their own firms, joining startups, joining incubators, joining venture capital firms, all around the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so the programs, MBAs in general, and Enetic in particular, are really starting to reflect this change that one uh, can see in MBA culture, which in the past I think was associated with more sort of corporate, uh, large corporate positions, et cetera. I think that the landscape around MBAs 
is changing quite a lot. And uh, we're happy to have a little head start on that at a deck. And so I wanted to share with you, um, as we have people joining, um, 10, uh, 10 facts about a deck and, uh, and what makes us a particularly um, strong MBA in the entrepreneurial sphere. First of all, if you're applying to the EDEC MBA, we have scholarships for entrepreneurs now. So we have the Make an Impact Scholarship, which is now offered to entrepreneurs who are either in activity um, or have had past entrepreneurial activity. And being an entrepreneur, or having entrepreneurial experience, sometimes in the past was looked at as a negative on a CV. Today, we look at that as a positive on a CV. So that's really interesting. So even if you've been an entrepreneur, maybe failed, maybe started something else, maybe rejoined business, et cetera, this is not the issue. The fact that you stepped out, took that risk and, and started your own company is something that interests us as a school and interests the employers who will hire you after or interests the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that will pick you up after the MBA. 10 to 11% of each graduating class at EDEC Will, be, will start their own business right after the MBA. So within three months after the MBA, they have, they're on the track to starting their own business. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually higher than most MBAs. So at EDEC, we're really privileged to have um, 10 to 11% of the class who goes on to start their own business. And you'll find um, that that's higher than any other MBA in France. And it's also higher than many other MBAs around the world. So we're very proud of that. A third thing you might want to know is that an MBA is a generalist business degree. So literally everything you learn in an MBA and the extensive exposure to real business during the MBA is relevant to starting and running a business. Um, fourth thing, we offer a specialization in entrepreneurship. So this allows our MBAs to specialize, dive deep into starting their business or taking over another business. Um, it could also be a Kickstarter for running an entrepreneurial or uh, an entrepreneurial aspect of a larger company. And so we focus a little bit on that as well, um, or what we might call corporate entrepreneurship. Fifth uh, fact to know that if you're an MBA at a deck, you can continue working after your specialization track on an eight week long tailored MBA project with the supervision of an edec professor. Uh, where you can continue working on your business plan and continuing working on um, what it is you want to launch after the MBA with some of your MBA peers and under the guidance, of course, of our faculty. So that's very, very interesting. Um, sixth fact, we have an ongoing partnership that we're very proud of with Plug and Play, which is one of the uh, world's most famous VC and incubator firms uh, based in uh, the US, based in Silicon Valley. This allows four MBAs every year to evaluate real startup pitches to VC on a global scale and with colleagues from other universities all around the world. So really some top universities. So really a fantastic sharing around what makes a startup pitch or a slide deck uh, something that's going to hook an investor and what's going to be the challenges they're going to, to bring up. So that's something very exciting. I hope that, uh, that Ali will be talking about it in a second. Seventh fact to know, MBAs interested in entrepreneurship at EDEC have a dedicated career coach. So as part of their Career Smart program, um, we have a serial entrepreneur and an experienced business angel who really um, can work alongside our, um, our MBAs to, uh, to help them uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with uh, where they're at in their business plan or where they're at in their, in their entrepreneurial journey. We have 28 members in a student-led entrepreneurship club, and I have um, Tom Mali, who's here online, and he's the leader this year. Um, Ali online here was also um, involved in the entrepreneurship club as well. They have regular events, and they foster entrepreneurial spirit, not only among the entrepreneurs in the class, but among everybody in the class. Um, and then we have an entrepreneur in residence, Karina Lush, who's a graduate of EDEC. She mentors MBAs. She advises on our program as to what we teach, and uh, she helps with events in the, um, in the uh, entrepreneurship club. And then final fun fact to know, uh, we have Agathe Vaillant who's on the line and EDEC Entrepreneurs is a part of EDEC Business School. It's a huge resource for both students and alumni with incubators for all stages of our graduates' businesses from early stage to acceleration. And notably we're one of only three, I believe, French schools in the Station F in Paris, which is one of the largest um, incubator spaces on earth right now. So uh, you see it behind Agathe 
uh, and uh, hopefully she will tell you more about that. So putting that all together, you can see the importance that EdEx accords to entrepreneurship and the significant resources that we align for those interested in starting a business. So my name is Sandra Riche. I'm the director of the Global MBA here at EDEC, and I'll be your uh, moderator and host this evening. And um, with me, I have uh, Mohamed Ali Ben Abbas, who's a graduate of EDEC MBA, Tom Mali, who's a current student and leader of the Entrepreneurship Club, and Agat Bayan, who is from EDEC Entrepreneurs and in charge of the incubators here at EDEC. So I'm going to let you uh, introduce yourselves briefly, uh, and we will start maybe with our alumnus, uh, Ali. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Ali. So uh, um, I'm uh, EDEC 2022, and uh, I graduated uh, with a specialization in uh, Entrepreneurship Club. Uh, an entrepreneurship track, sorry, and uh, I was uh, part of the entrepreneurship club uh, during that year. Uh, we, uh, I had a focus initially for when I started my MBA was to uh, launch uh, a shrimp farm in Europe. It sounds uh, nice, no? Uh, and it was based on initially uh, a business plan that I started working on. Uh, prior to the MBA uh, with an idea and then a global uh, business plan. And then I continued working on that later. What we do in uh, Aqua Development, which is a startup that I'm uh, part of, uh, is we produce uh, fresh shrimp that is sustainable, um, sustainably cultivated and with no antibiotics, no uh, chemicals, and that is pluggable any place. So we can cultivate shrimp in any place in the world, which is a new tech uh, and we are a few uh, today in the world that we can do that uh, really a few and we are all startups um i can maybe talk about uh, the details later so i would, ah, would like to you. pass yeah yeah thank you thank you so much for being with us ali and uh, super excited to learn more later about uh, about your business we'll get right back to you so i'll turn it over to tom for an introduction Hey, good evening. Um, thank you very much, Sandra. Uh, yes, yeah, so my name's Tom. I'm originally from the UK. I'm a current student here at EDEC. Um, my background is quite varied, really. I spent a number of years working in the banking and finance industry for large multinational banking firms. I've also done um, some independent consulting work um, across the hospitality industry and worked in things from as, as broadly ranging from farming to uh, wine and champagne export as well. So. Um, I'll, I'll go into more uh, detail about my motivations for getting involved with entrepreneurship, but um, just a, a little bit about my background. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks for being with us. You had a busy night tonight. I know yeah. you were pitching just before this call. So, uh, so really appreciate that you're with us tonight. Thanks so much. And uh, on to you, Agat. Thank you so much, Sandra, for having me today in your panel and very nice to meet you all. So my name is Agathe Vaillant. I am a former edX student. Uh, I have a specialization in strategy and innovation. I used to do consulting for three years and now I'm uh, very lucky and I am a startup program manager at edX Entrepreneur, which is the edX incubation program uh, based in Paris in Station F. And as uh, Sandra said, it's the world's largest uh, campus for startups. We we are um, one of the program, one of the 30 program there, and uh, we work alongside 1,000 other startups. Wow. In us, we, we host uh, 50 startups every year. Fantastic. Thanks again for being with us, I guess. I know it's uh, uh, probably been a busy day, and uh, we really appreciate you being here. So good. It sounds like we have a, a, a lot to discuss right now. So, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to uh, to jump in uh, as well among the panel if you want to know more about uh, about what uh, one another are saying. Let me start with, uh, with Ali. You're freshly graduated from the MBA. You were a VC analyst for Plug and Play while you were a student. You were involved in the Entrepreneurship Club. But most importantly, you launched your business um, successfully following the MBA. And uh, from what I understand, um, there's been a, a, a good impact of um, doing the MBA on, on your business. So first of all, tell us more about your startup, as you promised. And uh, then uh, my question would be, how did the MBA help kickstart that business? Okay, to uh, be maybe a bit 
brief. Uh, the history of the startup uh, dates a bit. Uh, it was launched prior to me joining it. Uh, I joined later uh, as an, part of uh, the co-founders, uh, but uh, I would be specific in Europe because uh, the business now is international and the startup is getting to, to, to the international level. Uh, the startup is based on a tech that was developed uh, since 2014. Uh, based on a trial and fail uh, for shrimp farming uh, by a professor, Korean professor, who was joined later by the two co-founders, initial co-founders in Korea. And they basically made the, that technology commercial and they raised money initially in Korea and then uh, internationally. Uh, and uh, the idea was, the philosophy is to change the whole way of thinking of uh, shrimp farming because it's one of the hardest uh, species to farm uh, among the aquatic species and the way it's done today it's actually very harmful to uh, the uh, environment mm -hmm. and partly to the ocean myself being passionate about the ocean uh, among all activities believe me that's why I chose a deck by the way to do my MBA mm -hmm. I haven't even applied to uh, HEC or others um, it's it sounds a bit weird but yes that mm -hmm. was one of the reasons uh, and i don't regret it at all uh, so the idea was to to my my uh, idea was to propagate this commercial uh business uh, to uh, the european market so i built up a, a business model which uh, had also an uh, impact on the technology which was developed further to suit the market here we went into testing uh, uh, at a commercial level in Korea last year successfully and we raised money uh, to do the expansion internationally. Now currently we have potentially, uh, hopefully, I would say, in Belgium uh, our first farm. It was supposed to be in France. Unfortunately, it was moved to Belgium because we had more uh, reception, I would say, uh, receptivity from the uh, Belgian uh, government and from uh, the Belgian authorities to come and Put our first farm in Belgium. It's going to be over a 40 hectares farm and uh, we are raising now the money to uh, finance that. Um, I hope that gave you a bit of an idea about what uh, we do. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, maybe I go, can go because I can go uh, in different ways, in diff details if you want to know about the tech or if you want to know about uh, the startup history, uh, I can go uh, into those directions, but I prefer to keep it here. <laughs> <for now. laughs> okay. Well, first I should say congrats because that's pretty uh, incredible to already be at that stage. You know, uh, from the time you came over here to Europe uh, to France to study your MBA, now to be already um, putting your first farm in place in Belgium. That's been uh, must have been a, a quite a wild ride up until now. In any case. Yeah. Um, I should mention before we, we go a little bit deeper, um, Ali, to the folks online, uh, you have a question box that's uh, on the um, lower right-hand side of your screen, probably. And uh, do not put your questions in the chat, but put them in the question box, and we'll get to answering those um, as we go through, and, uh, and also we'll save some time at the end. I see a question already. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah. um, then I think you know your next question. There you go. <laughs> well, should I answer now or we I, I think I was going to ask you more or less the same question so let's okay. uh, this is a question from Ridi uh, Saha yeah. and it's uh, what's the MBA's role in your startup journey Ali and thanks for your insight so that was pretty close to my next question so yeah. let's take Ridi's question I think the MBA gave you give you generally give you the environment to focus on your business, give you the resources. Also, I would say I was really exposed during my MBA to uh, everything. And that's what is a startup a journey. It's everything. It's not finance. It's not engineering. It's not it's everything. And you have to be ready to be uh, capable of defending and raising uh, your business to that level and to manage that you have to have the environment the resources and uh, the people i had the people i had uh, 
potentially the money it was not the main reason it was mostly the environment understanding the market having the time to consult the right people uh, in in the mba we had great great professors honestly in the entrepreneurship track uh, i was also uh, lucky to get selected into the plug and play um, uh, program which helped me a lot to have visibility to have the investors uh, point of view towards a business a successful uh, startup and uh, I was doing the job of uh, a selection uh, for uh, as an investment analyst. And that gives me perspective. And from that, we jumped and we built actually, as I was saying uh, earlier in backstage with Sandra, I said, we, I, I, I bought the, the business plan for the whole startup because initially they were, they were really testing mostly and trying on, try and failing uh, on, on that kind of level. And I, build uh, the whole um, strong business plan that can be pitched on and to uh, angels, uh, VCs and so on. And now it's it's helped us a lot to get attention for from big VCs because with small VCs, you can really based on the tech, based on your what what is your MVP, you can basically pitch that. But once you get to commercial level, I would say series A, B and, and so on, you have to have a strong uh, of course, background, uh, business track, and so on. But you have also to have a, a strong strategy and in, in way forward. And that you have to think it a lot. And it's not simple. You have legal uh, uh, obligations. You have uh, the perspective toward the market, and so on and so on. And that was what I got to do and helped a lot the whole startup evolving. And I can tell you now we are in four continents. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you for that. Let's um, go back a little bit to um, to the plug and play experience. How did you decide to apply for that? And, and then how do you get selected for it? Ah, that was uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, actually, I heard of plug and play uh, a bit before uh, I know the program because I was looking for a big VC to finance us. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that Plug and Play was uh, uh, one of the programs uh, uh, that EDEC uh, had uh, in, in proposal for the students. And uh, it was it was a good surprise because I I, I wanted to be part of the ad tech, but there was no ad tech, unfortunately. So I had to get into the smart tech, uh, which covers part of the ad tech and covers smart uh, things. I, my background is actually engineering. I've done uh, it sounds weird, but I have done mostly mechanical, uh, oil and gas, and uh, it was in the Middle East, in Japan, uh, mm. that I worked before, and it, it, it was really various. So, smart tech sounded the best among those proposed. Of, there, were, there were four proposed, so I went into there. And it helped a lot, like, as I said, to understand the investor's perspective, because when you are in a startup, you're basically kind of... Uh, admiring what you're doing and you're into some kind of a wrong focus sometimes and you think that what you're doing is right but actually from the investor perspective which helps a lot also to make uh, your business profitable to be honest mm -hmm. because uh, the investors will look at uh, you know uh, airwise and uh, the numbers on the financials and not necessarily just on the tech but also i've learned that from this experience is that the team is the first key things that VCs would look at. And that was surprising because most of the startups that I've learned of that they failed at a certain point, it's because of the team. Mm -hmm. And if the co-founders or founders come to a disagreement, a big disagreement on the strategy, for example, generally that would be one of the big issues that uh, a startup could, fail, could, uh, could face. So yeah, these details I haven't had uh, before the experience to 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 know, but uh, hon that was what, what uh, I valued a lot into this, and I was surprised, as I said, to have this program into a deck. Yeah, thanks. That's that's true. We've now had the partnership going on a fifth year, so that's very exciting, and yeah. uh, and uh, we've gone from having two analysts a year to four analysts a year, and every year we get uh, feedback from Plug and Play. That's uh, and we awesome. got to visit them actually, Sandra. Yeah, too. you did. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, uh, in the entrepreneurship track. Yeah. That was actually one of my my last question for you, Ali. Is to looking back on your MBA experience, 
Um, what are some of your fondest entrepreneurial memories, I should say? Funniest ones? I think we, I, I, I um, a bit overcommitted to other projects with <laughs> with the team, with the club. I would say in the club, guys, everyone, I would not say guys, but everyone, please take one project and focus on it. Because I was involved in, besides uh, that uh, business, but besides my idea, I was involved into um, uh, Marlon's idea, which was uh, to have uh, a, a, the, the chef, the home chef, and then we overtook actually a website, an existing business. And I was committing a lot with Natro at the time. And uh, hopefully at the end, we uh, kind of said, okay, let's come calm down. And we, we had we had retracted ourselves to our own businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but initially we overcommitted a lot. And I think we wasted a lot of time and we actually wasted the time also for the other entrepreneurs. When you actually don't have a value added into a team, Better keep it small, I would mm. say. Mm. We had, uh, I would say maybe Tom, uh, I think you're, you're ex you'll go through that experience. You will have a lot of motivated people for uh, the entrepreneurship club and the ideas that will, you will be pitching everyone. Uh, just constitute the core teams for each idea, but not don't exceed the quota for the number of people because otherwise it will be a lot of meetings with no results, I would say. And that was what happened a bit. Mm, yeah. So so focus, right? Yeah. That's focus. Yes. Yeah. We had we had nice moments. A lot of uh, you know nights hanging around and drinking and so on and eating and brainstorming. But concretely, we weren't really doing much. And it was like uh, for two months, and then we 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 thought like guys, we were we're actually not doing anything. <laughs> And I think especially entrepreneurial students are full of ideas and yes, full of yes, energy. Exactly. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's a, also a your superpower. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a danger. <laughs> so you have to find the balance maybe between your yeah. uh, your desire to innovate and ideas and do things, and then your desire to learn and, and succeed in your MBA and, and work on your business. Uh, which yes. you'll be launching after. And it's true that the MBA goes very, very quickly. Uh, so before you know it, you're already, you know, on the on the starting ramp for your post MBA life. But let me take you back, uh, Ali, to uh, to MBA life by asking Tom a few questions because he's just started, Tom, right? We started in September. Uh, yeah. We're now halfway through the first semester, so uh, making good headway, 25% <laughs> through the program. And uh, Tom, you uh, stepped up to take leadership of the Entrepreneurship Club here. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. What made you, uh, what motivated you to stand up to that? Sure, yeah. Um, personally, for me, entrepreneurship is always something that has intrigued me uh, and has always sort of been in the back of my mind as something that I should try out um i've you know i've sort of explored ideas in the past but never really had the um the guts i'd say to mm -hmm. to go ahead with any of them and so i i i really feel that the entrepreneurship club here and and within the kind of the safe space of uh, the mba it's kind of a sandbox to try things out yeah. um so for me getting involved in the entrepreneurship club was a no-brainer and then um, upon hearing about the sort of um, the things that previous years had done and the freedom that um, the clubs are given to kind of chart their own course and, and pick the kind of things that they want to do and the things that they want to learn and experience, it, becoming the club lead was something that I was really interested in because it would mean that I would be able to, to have my finger on the pulse really with everything that was going on entrepreneurially amongst my, uh, my classmates and also it was, it, from a, I guess, from a selfish perspective, it, it sort of helps me network. It helps me learn more about myself. It helps me learn more and get more experience. It's a, it's a really good leadership opportunity. Um, and so far, I mean, like Sandra said, um, we're we're two two and a half months in now, um, and you know, my days are very long. My I don't know where they go. Um, I'm tired all the time, but it's a, it's a really good feeling that um, you know, it's kind of it gets the the creative juices flowing really well. Is that good training to be an entrepreneur, Ali? I think so. To <laughs> to be to be uh, burning the candle on both ends and uh, and working very hard, I imagine, is something that you have to get used to if you want to be an entrepreneur. But it's a lot of fun. Yes, good. absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the, one of the things that I uh, 
I still have to pinch myself about really is that um, I don't hate Mondays. Um, and that's a, a really nice feeling like, uh, you know, Sunday night, I don't have the fear of the next day. And when I wake up on a Monday morning, it's it's with a positive energy to see what the next week brings. And, and I think sort of being um, being in the club and sort of um, um, trying to run the club, we have, as Sandra said, 28 people in it. It's by, it's by far the biggest subscribed club um, of this cohort. So trying to juggle all of those uh, competing voices and ideas and everything else, um, it's it's hard work, but it's it's super rewarding. That's awesome. uh, if I may, how many people do you have in class this year? <laughs> 61. One. Okay. So that's a, a very large part of the cohort. Yeah, it's almost half. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my, it's, my pitch uh, must have been good. <laughs> you, must, you must be on a good uh, path to pitching. Also, you had your first event, Tom. Tell us about that. Yes. So last week we held an event um, off campus um, at one of the many bars in Nice, um, which was an improv pitch night. So um, because we are such a large group, we needed to do something that everybody could um, feel like they could take part in and everybody could learn something from, hopefully. Um, so we... Um, we booked out an area of a, of a bar where we set up uh, a laptop which which brought up um, pitching ideas. So people took it in turns and they were presented with um, an existing business, something like Airbnb or Amazon or Facebook or something like that. And then uh, a scenario, usually ridiculous, which they then had to, um, to, had to pitch that business idea for. So I think one of the ones that we did was um, Air, Airbnb for cats. Um, so it, it was almost kind of like a pitching version of Cards Against Humanity, um, where the sort of the, the, the suggestions got more and more ridiculous as the night got went on. And, and as the beer got drank, no. exactly, yeah. And um, and it was it was it was really good fun. But everybody got a chance to stand up and to to pitch in front of the rest of the group, um, which for some people one of the main things that they wanted to learn or to, to gain experience of uh, this year is to have more confidence to stand up in front of people and have um, more confidence presenting. So we felt that by having this event, it would be a good opportunity um, within a sort of informal environment for people to work on their presentation skills, to work on their uh, improvisation and sort of thinking outside the box a little bit creatively. Mm -hmm. um, so it worked really well. And we also did, we also did a, um, an improv pitch rap battle competition. So again, uh, we drew uh, business ideas out of a hat and then divided everybody into two teams and then gave each team a minute. They had to, they had to choose somebody from the team and then they had to pitch that business idea for a minute. And then we, uh, we voted on which of the two pitches um, we felt was best for that, for that idea. And, um, and then they would win a point for their team. Um, and the, the, the businesses we pitched there were all successful uh products that had been on shark tank in the us but mm -hmm. were, were completely random products like um there's one company which sells socks by packs of three um in case you lose one or get a hole in one of them so sort of really strange but successful business ideas so that was it was a lot a lot of fun and um yeah the first hopefully of many events Right. Yeah. Well, now we know why you have the largest membership of the uh, MBA <laughs> clubs, right? So we also have clubs, of course, in finance and consulting, social impact um, and diversity. Mm. Uh, who am I missing? Um, project management. Project management as well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm um, quite... The uh, other boring topics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but by far, the entrepreneurship club has always been uh, the most out of the box and the most creative when it comes to events, which I think is part and parcel of, of the entrepreneurial world, right? So, uh, so that's uh, fantastic. And thanks for everything you have been contributing to, to ADEC uh, and to, the, to your classmates, Tom, around entrepreneurship. When you were deciding on an MBA, was uh, what was it about a deck was a deciding factor from an entrepreneurial point of view? From from an entrepreneurial perspective, it was um, the hit the history behind the school, obviously, as you've mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, but also the uh, the real focus on it. If you if you are of an entrepreneurial mind and then that is your objective, you really can tailor the MBA to that, um, and you are encouraged and supported to do that as well. Um, to have that freedom and to have the the sort of the support from the staff and from the sort of the academics behind it as well as um 
the extended uh, alumni network and the, the, the faculties network as well as the, the um the business network uh, that exists with the school mm -hmm. um it really is a is a great opportunity to to try things out and to develop ideas um and to to build contacts which may be of use if you're if you're setting up your own business or if you want to to get involved with somebody else and and work on their idea fantastic i love your term of um uh the sandbox i think that's mm. a that's a nice uh um metaphor for what you can live in the mba kind of a safe space where you can play yeah. around try things uh they can uh, you know build them up knock them down and uh, exactly. and enjoy being a bit creative so that's well, for, for me for me that was was really important i think in the past when i've when i sort of toyed with the idea of doing something it's been well you need to pay rent you need to pay bills you have you have responsibilities and i'm not saying that i don't have those responsibilities now but um at least I'm in an environment that is um, that is supportive of, of of experimentation and supportive of of thinking outside the box and trying new things and really pushing ideas to the full. So it's a really a good opportunity this year to to explore those um, sort of thoughts and feelings with like-minded people who perhaps have experience in different um, industry sectors, geographies, cultures that. That I don't have, so it's a uh, it's a really sort of stimulating and um, uh, encouraging environment. So yeah, that's it's really great. Good. Yeah, it's one of the things we try to do in the entrepreneurship track. Is uh, and and uh, Ali, you probably experienced this. Is really um, critiquing, but also supporting other other projects that other um, classmates have, and then just the network that you have of expertise just sitting right around you, global expertise in almost any area that you can come to as a resource. Is really something uh, something fantastic with the diversity that we have. Yeah, the only thing I would say uh, about the entrepreneurship track, I would uh, I would have wished that it was a bit longer. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> <Or> sign. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really an enriching. Uh, I think it's by far my preferred uh, part of the MBA. To, maybe because I'm biased by the entrepreneurship uh, uh, bias. And uh, I, I was like uh, enjoying it, not only the fact that I had the time and the resources and the help from the professor to focus on my business, but it was also hearing and listening to others uh, brainstorming or building their own ideas too. I think out of, uh, we had uh, maybe seven serious business mm -hmm. models at the time. And uh, I remember I was uh, by them with uh, Claire uh, and she's now in with, um, uh, in Germany, with one of the big hotel chain, I think it's uh, uh, Hilton. Hilton. Yes, Hilton. Yes, great. Uh, but she had an idea, really excellent idea, that I loved about Epad, and it was coming from a personal point of uh, personal uh, history with her grandma. Hmm. And I think it w would have worked if she just worked on that. I hope she will one day uh, do it because it's uh, an excellent idea and. There is nothing that uh, I could say about it. It's just uh, the market is there, the need is there, and it will help people. It will literally help people. It's interesting that you say that because we often do see alumni who maybe won't launch directly after the MBA, might go on uh, to repay their, their loans or to, uh, to yeah. get a little bit more experience under their belt, uh, maybe have an uh, overseas experience or come back to France in the case that they've been working abroad. Um, then uh, you'll see that uh, there's like a second wave, two to three years out, we still have, yes. actually have a larger number of, um, of entrepreneurs. So that's kind of uh, a good point that you bring up, that even though you may have taken the entrepreneurship track while you're in the MBA um, and your idea isn't fresh and ready to go at the outset, it may be ready a few years down the line which is a, a really good uh, transition for you, Agat, because Agat yeah. uh, helps EDEC alumni and EDEC, also EDEC students, but EDEC graduates um, move move from studies into actually launching their business. So Agat, I'm gonna leave it to you to talk to us a little bit more about how EDEC entrepreneurs supports um, uh, the ecosystem of entrepreneurship for all of our students. I think we've had three MBAs incubated by EDEC entrepreneurs, um, one in Nice, two in Paris in Station F some time ago, uh, and uh, always welcome that kind of support. And it's really something 
that we cherish in the MBA in any case that uh, that we have this facility to be able to have, be incubated in such a fabulous space. Uh, but it goes well beyond Station F. So I wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit more about what EdEx Entrepreneurs does. Sure. So for to give you a little bit of context, so EdEx Entrepreneur was created 10 years ago and we have three main missions. The first one is to be to raise awareness about entrepreneurship among our students. The second would be to empower students to go from a project idea to a finalized prototype. So this is what we call our pre-incubation program. And third, we have the incubation program itself, and it's to help entrepreneurs who already have their prototype to scale up their businesses and accelerate. And uh, for that, we have three locations. So we have one in Station Ave in Paris, so the photo right behind me. And also, we have an incubator in Lille and in uh, Sofia, nearby Nice, with uh, two other engineers, engineering schools. So we've partnered with the EMT and Ericom to build up a um, tech incubator. So this is a bit more about uh, EDEC, yeah, all of of uh, all of our activities what is the relationship now that we have with the sky deck berkeley sky deck incubator in the us yes um very good question so uh every month we would uh, recommend one of our startups um and this startup will be able to um get uh, fasten let's say the 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 application process mm -hmm. to get to their program so we recommend a startup and, and then they can uh, follow their path uh, in the international incubator in Berkeley. Fabulous. And I also understood that there's a space, an entrepreneurial space that's uh, been um, donated. The, the former atelier from LVMH have been uh, transformed into an entrepreneurial space in our campus in Lille. Absolutely. So as we've noticed a growing interest um, about entrepreneurship, we also developed. So in our three locations in Lille, we have a dedicated campus in which we host all of our courses. So the MSc, uh, the entrepreneurship MSc uh, track is right there. Mm -hmm. And also our co-working space for our entrepreneurs is in this specific campus. Mm -hmm. It's a 10 minute walk from the main campus. And it was gifted by the Arnaud family which is the family which owns uh, Louis Vuitton. Okay. Uh, the other location would be Station F. And uh, to give you a bit more figures, so uh, we in Station F, there are 3,000 entrepreneurs and 1,000 startups. So it's also very great to, to be able to reach out and to connect with all the startups in the same uh, field as you are working in. So we also have the, the clubs within Station F, mm -hmm. uh, which enables our uh, entrepreneurs to quickly connect with other uh, other people who may have the, the same problem, the same question as them. Fantastic. What's it like a day in the life uh, at Station F right now? Um, maybe my day. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, I can or a day for a startup over there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what we offer is, first of all, a co-working space, because whenever you kick up a startup, it's, it's very difficult to find the correct place to start it. So um, they, they would uh, have their specific uh, desk. Also, um, they would meet with me monthly. So I am a program manager and I will define with them uh, monthly objectives. And also I will collect their needs uh, based on, on their needs. Let's say uh, I need help to build up my sales B2B strategy. I will reach out to our 300 experts that are usually EDEC alumni to coach them on specific topics. So on demand and uh, at on a custom based um, basis, they would have some coaching with experts on very uh, specific fields. As Ali said, it's um, you need to be multi-skilled whenever you kick off your startup. Mm. And it's very difficult to have all the answers. So the most important thing is to be surrounded by the right people and also to have answers to your questions very fast. Mm -hmm. So that's what we provide. Um, and another um, person that is uh, quite interesting in the, 
in the life of a startup at uh, at Station F or on at our other locations would be a mentor. So this person would uh, challenge you on your strategy and your long term goals. So this, uh, yeah, this is quite different from my uh, my job and uh, most important needs uh, access to networks. So I said uh, the experts, but also alumni, all the station after great entrepreneurs, uh, the partners, the investors. It's it's um, it's in the same dynamic to be well surrounded. This is the most important to build up your network growingly um, in order to uh, connect to the right person at uh, the right time, whenever you need to find funds or whatever. Yeah, I think it's uh, I've been to Station F and it's uh, very impressive. And uh, you can see that um, the whole uh, infrastructure around uh, entrepreneurship is there. So, you know, uh, Microsoft and Salesforce are there giving uh, free access to CRM and cloud. And uh, you have um, investors, even banks who are there actually helping, yes. helping entrepreneurs really understand, you know, how can they grow, how can they fund, et cetera. And I think that that's just so handy and so available. And I know that there's regular workshops and just so much interaction among the different um, startups that just makes it a really exciting place to, uh, to visit. So we'll be yeah. happy to uh, send our students up there in January. Yes, correct. And not only... Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Not only they would benefit from the all all that everything that is organized by Station F, but we um, mimic this, and we also host events and and have partners and and so on. So they have they would have that through the incubator and also have that through Station F. Um, so it's a, yeah. it's a re really dynamic environment and which provides you with uh, many opportunities. So it's not uh, for everyone. So I guess there's a selection process to get in. Is Absolutely, that right? Yeah. I guess. How, how hard is it to get into Station F if you're an EdEd graduate? Um, so first we have some selection criteria, let's say. Mm -hmm. So one of the founders would, must be from EdEd or a partner school. So check. <laughs> so come to EdEd. <laughs> <That's the first laughs> um, but also, yeah, founders must be must be working full time on the project mm. and must be physically on site. Uh, those criteria are very important because otherwise, if we cannot meet with the startup, it's very, uh, very, very hard to help them and provide the the, the right uh, connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, you have to have your a finalized and tested uh, prototype. This is what I I uh, broke down our different uh, programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in order to be incubated, you, you need to have this final uh, tested prototype. And um, I think one thing that could be interesting for you, uh, you need to have your startup that was created in France. Okay. So this is the, about the criteria, and then it's, it's very simple. You apply, so you upload your deck and a demo and you fill up some questions. Um, if you get through, you get to pitch your project. The, the duration of the incubation is 12 months. So depending on the, the location, we would uh, open the application at different timings. And to give you a little bit of figures, uh, we would only keep 20%, uh, a little less of the applicants. So it's quite competitive selection. And every year we, we have many, many, many more uh, applicants, which is very, very great um, and wonderful projects. But yeah. Nice. Tell, tell us, uh, just to wrap up, what uh, one of the uh, EDEC uh, Entrepreneur Incubator's success stories. Yeah, sure. Um, one of our great success stories would be Yuka. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I don't know if you're familiar with Yuka. I am Y-U-K-A, right? If, if there yes. are people online who don't know it, exactly. if you can look that up. So they went through our program and now they're pretty well known, at least in France. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you would scan uh, your labels on your products. So either health products or food products and cosmetics. And they would tell you if uh, it's a healthy product or not. And they will provide you with the recommendation to switch to another and healthier product. So 
Yeah, which is really incredible right now when, you know, we're all about transparency and traceability and also health, right? So so uh, that's a very exciting and it's also a woman entrepreneur, which is uh, which is great, who's a graduate from edX. So that's uh, all very inspiring. I'm going to leave some time for questions. If you haven't put some in the box, now's the time. Uh, add in some questions for us. And uh, if there aren't any questions, I, of course, have a few more questions. So... I can help you with that, but let me just quickly see if we have some, I give you some time to, uh, to add something to the box. And um, if not, we will, uh, we will wrap up with a, uh, a little, a quick, uh, quick uh, round the table, uh, what I call rapid fire response. So I'll ask uh, three different uh, questions to the panel and I'll let you decide who, uh, who will answer. Uh, and uh, each time I'm going to ask you for one thing. Okay. And uh, this might help some of the questions come uh, into the box, but uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, and that will be, what one thing can you say to those who may still be hesitating to make the leap, either to become an entrepreneur or to take an MBA? I've stumped the panel. <laughs> I'm happy to respond as okay. a current MBA. Um, for me, it was um, a decision that I took to uh, to take a running jump, basically, to try to try and better myself, to learn more about myself, but also to to meet like-minded people. Um, I found throughout sort of my life so far that it's it's the the interactions that you have and the people that you meet are often the the doors to your next opportunity. So for me, it was as much about networking as it was about the academic side, and continues to be so. Good. Anyone to add anything? Maybe on the not the MBA side, but more the entrepreneurship side. I would say uh, if you're hesitating, maybe if you're scared because you're alone and you want to build up a startup uh, alone. And I want just to reassure you to say you're not alone and we can help you. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Thanks. In the meantime, Jordan has yeah. given us a question in our question box. So. Uh, Guys, how do you feel about the program's length? I'm assuming this is for Ali and Tom. Uh, would you wish it were shorter, longer? Were you unsure about the length you wanted before joining? Uh, maybe I can start. Uh, I will just add to what was said uh, on the previous question first. Uh, I would say it's never uh, it's never a loss to to try something good. I mean, if you believe in your idea just do it it's it's not you just need to think it well identify the resources that you need identify the people that will help you on that journey but go for it uh, i did the same mistake before in japan when i, I was uh, with a team actually and we built a product uh, from bamboo fiber and we pitched it we got uh, uh, almost to sign a contract of 26 million at the time with uh, daiwa house to sell the tech just the tech mm -hmm. and we did not persevere we did not do the patent and the team just exploded and we discarded and i think it just was uh, that mistake i mean i would say mistake but it's an experience at the end uh, that was that pushed me to decide on not doing it again if i get the opportunity and Believe me, this is not my idea this time. It was not my it was my idea before, but this time it was my not my idea. I just joined a team. Uh, so just go for it. The second answering that question, I think the MBA in a deck is perfect. Honestly, on the length, it's perfect. I just said I wish the entrepreneurship track was a bit longer because it was really supported supporting uh, uh, me a lot. I think I had enough time to think. To consult, we had professors from different backgrounds, um, and uh, mostly I was. I'm still in contact with John Wee because he's helping me a lot on the financial side on having uh, connections in France uh, with uh, VCs with angels. But uh, that's that's it. I think it's you get all, and we get enough time. Honestly, it's perfect. I think that's interesting that you point out, you know, the part of being in a smaller program is you really get to know your classmates, but also your professors. And that's interesting yeah. that you're still following up with your professor. And we were talking about yeah. following up with your career coach uh, long after the MBA. So that's really nice to hear. 
and, and it's not only Jean-Louis, I'm, I'm still in contact with uh, uh, a few of our professors and consult them on many topics. So feel free to do that too. It's, uh, it's, it's free resources, honestly. Mm, great, yeah, good advice. All right, my next, uh, my next uh, um, rapid fire question for you. What one piece of advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are considering taking an MBA to kickstart their business? Can you repeat, would, please, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> what one Sweet. piece of advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are considering taking an MBA to kickstart their business? I got to, I think you were to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, my advice would be just to test and learn. Dare. Good. Thanks. Tom, you want to add anything? Um... From my from my perspective, um, it's it's to have the the backing and the support. Um, I think for me, they're they're the thing that someone to say that it's okay to be scared and that they that meeting people that have been there and done it before is sort of inspiring for for me and and encourage it encourages me to to try things. Um, yeah, I guess I don't know. I'm not I'm not quite in that position yet. <laughs> that's hard, true. It's hard to answer. That's true. That's true. Um, in terms, Ali, so you having gone through the MBA, um, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who's going through the MBA to make the most of it? Honestly, uh, time. Use the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, do really working on the business plan because I have to say, last year I was still working with my ex company as a remote consultant, so as mm -hmm. as an ex freelancer. It took part of my time from the entrepreneurship work and I tried to manage, but it was not enough. So you have a lot to do. Don't underestimate the, the because what you can think about is you are there, you have time and you have resources mm -hmm. and you will not have that exact kind of uh, environment unless you join an incubator. It's a bit like an incubator while you're living there because mm -hmm. you have the resources. You still have access actually to incubators also. I think you can consult a gap if you have any advices to prepare your business so that it can be pitchable, so, so that it can be brought to a, a VC or an incubator or an accelerator. So use that time. Use it wisely. Don't underestimate the length of the, the track. It's really short. I mean, if you look at it like that, it's really short. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's great advice. Um, we have one more minute, so I give you one word each. In one word, what do you love about entrepreneurship? One word only. <laughs> That's tough. I'd say uncertainty. Okay. Thank you. I'd say resourcefulness. Okay. And I would say expression. Fabulous. And I would say thank you to all of my panelists and uh, to all of our entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs and MBAs online. Uh, I hope that this webinar has been uh, helpful. I hope it's been a nice conversation for my panelists. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed hearing your insights and uh, and uh, your stories. And uh, I'm even more excited to uh, to greet uh, more entrepreneurs into the program and to be able to offer so many uh, so many great ways of uh, developing new businesses. Um, here at the deck. So a warm thanks to everyone. And uh, I uh, wish you a pleasant, I guess, evening, day, depends where you're dialing in. Thank you, right. <laughs> thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you for your time. Good luck. Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs>